Okay, I'm going to try and keep my voice low so that you won't hear that scratch in the audio. I'm doing this part because I've been accused falsely, ignorantly I guess, <clears throat> of using the term transmutation with respect to Darwinism. People who don't know enough about um, evolution think that transmutation is not a Darwinian term and not an evolutionary term but is impossible. Yeah, transmutation is impossible, that's the point. But here I want to show you that this is Darwin's own term. And it's this issue of transmutation so that an egg can actually, as it were, progress to become a human. That this concept of transmutation is inherent and core to the whole Darwinian argument, whether you're talking about Darwin himself, who invented the term, or well, maybe he didn't invent it, but he used it, versus the Neo-Darwinians represented by Dawkins and his crowd. They're all trying to prove transmutation. It's inherent in the idea of Darwinian ev evolution. So you're starting with a common one-celled couple of proteins in primordial ooze that magically produce all of this subsequent life. And I say magically because there's no evidence that what they're contending is true. And the whole heart of it is transmutation. Not merely mutation, but transmutation. A change, a mutation in the genes specifically because the neo-Darwinists are focused on the genes. A mutation in the genes so significant that an ape is no longer an ape, but becomes something more complex, i.e. hominid. There's no evidence that's happening. There's nothing in the fossil evidence. There's nothing in the way genes work. There's nothing in math that produces this. Okay? And there's nothing really in physics either. All right? It just, it just doesn't work. All right, but for you to see that, you're going to have to first start with the fact that this is the heart of the contention, because this term transmutation is more recognized today, even among evolutionists, as being a kind of hokey thing, and they're trying to cover it up that this is really what they're trying to prove. Okay. And so far, all they do is basically say evolution is true because evolution is true because evolution is true. There's no evidence to back it up. So when an atheist says evolution is true, it's a fact. And then accuses the Christian of saying, well, the Bible is true because the Bible is true because the Bible is true. Well, I'm sorry, atheist, if you're, make, you're making the same argument. And actually, we Christians don't say the Bible is true because the Bible is true. We first get proof that God exists and that he's the God of the Bible before we're even comfortable saying the Bible is true. And even a lot of us who are Christians aren't sure the Bible is true. So, you know, you got to start paying attention to your own backyard here. Transmutation is at issue in evolutionary theory, period. So how do you find that so you can prove it's not just brain out making the term up? See? You can go to Wikipedia, which is not an objective source, really, because anybody can write in it. But generally speaking, you're going to find a mix of good stuff and bad stuff in Wiki articles. I support Wikipedia. Okay, Darwin Online, his own notebooks. Okay, there's Biology Online. There's, there's Arcana. Okay, so there's a lot of this. Okay, now the one thing I wanted to point your attention to is there's an old book you can download here called Transmutation of the, the Darwinian Theory of Transmutation. It's by another guy, Mackenzie Beverly. I would suggest instead you just read Origin of the Species and Darwin himself. It's a very readable book. It's very simple. Okay. And take you, you know, an evening to read better than watching TV. All right, but the advantage of this book is you can download it. See, look, 
download, download. Now, what I, the reason I recommend this book is that I've been trying to explain to you that this is a decree in the Bible. Not necessarily the Darwinian version, but something. God did something to allow what we call evolution in some format to occur. It's not specific. In this guy, you know, Mackenzie, this is an 1830 book. I think it's 1830. Is explaining it. It's in the 1800s. That's why you can download it for free. See, download. All right. This guy is paying attention to the fact that. All right. That there is a decree in the Bible. Now, I, I want to make that point and stress it here, because on the one hand, to argue transmutation, there's no evidence that that's what actually occurs. So whatever evolution is, it's not transmutation. And therefore, you have to argue, well, then is it even evolution? There's no evidence that transmutation occurs. Mutation, yes. Transmutation, no. The difference between the two is that a fly can mutate, but it'll always remain a fly. A whale can mutate, but it always remains a whale. An amphibian can mutate, but it always always remains an amphibian. So you can't just, you would have to have transmutation to say that somehow a, a, a fish can become a whale, and that's actually a little more plausible, can become an amphibian, can become a land animal, can become a human. That's stretching it. The genetic changes required are too many. That's the problem with transmutation. So if you're really hung up on this Darwinian thing, start reading about transmutation. Look at Darwin's own notebooks. And then start comparing this guy's explanation, which is classical Darwinism. Because th this guy wrote before Neo-Darwinism was born. And, and read what he says. I'm not, I'm not sure if what he says is all that great. But it's a readable book and you can download it and that will help you get a sense of the issues to examine. Okay? And then for those of you who, t who claim that I was making up the idea of transmutation, you could have Googled yourself on the term to find out that I wasn't making it up. See, this is why I get so sharp and harsh with people. If you're not willing to do your homework, I'm not willing to talk to you or be nice to you. Sorry. If you are willing to do your homework, then I want to hear what you got to say. And if you are willing to do your homework, you should investigate this whole concept of transmutation in order to understand the Dawkins argument, which is a much more um, restrictive and less logical and less supported idea of Darwinian, you know, evolution than even Darwin's idea. Darwin, Darwin was much more pluralistic in his ideas. And his ideas made much more sense than the neo-Darwinian version today. And therefore, go back here and read what this guy's analysis is. Even though it's in the 1800s. All right. They were more scholastic in the 1800s than they are now. And above all, read Origin of the Species Yourself. It's an interesting book. Okay, very engaging, especially the last chapter. So go read it. And then, like I said, if you're going to sit there and tell me that Darwinian evolution is not about transmutation, I'm sorry, that's the key to the whole series. That's the key to the whole argument of Darwinian evolution, whether in classical Darwin or neo-Darwinian. Okay? So that's it. Signing off.